Oh, good morning guys. We're gonna do something we haven't done before and I thought I'd bring you guys along because I know a lot of you can't make it. You're out in the US or you're out of town or whatnot. So we're gonna head over to Linden Trout Hatcheries. That's not new, we've been there before. We got a trunk full of really cool things to show off to the fans. We're doing a meet and greet today. And just wait for Kevin, we're gonna carpool here. Looks like Don's here. You guys know Don from Modern Self Reliance just driving by. So he's gonna park here. Kevin came in the wrong parking lot. He's over on the other side. He's gonna swing back around, looks like. You found your way okay? Yep, not a problem. Are you excited to see everybody? Yeah, it'd be uh, nice to see people. Right, for the first time kind of, right? Exactly. Yeah. We're gonna get loaded up. And we'll head over to Linden's and let you guys know what we're up to do. We're gonna do a little bit of a demonstration, maybe some fishing, and it's gonna be 100% meet and greet. And you guys keep reminding Kevin that Don does all the work. He loves that stuff. What are you, late? I'm early. Yeah, I'm late. late. Uh, it's close. I'm here. I thought it'd be pretty cool to show the glamper off. Everybody can take a little bit of a tour inside. But we got to get everything over there and get situated before the crowds arrive. I don't know. It's going to be a pretty intimate gathering. There's not going to be too many people, I don't think, because it was kind of a last minute throw together. But, uh, you know, we'll probably do this again if it's successful. All right, looks like we're locked and loaded. We got a bunch of cool tools. I got a spear. Hopefully that doesn't fall out in the middle of the road. A bone spear. I think it's in there pretty tight. We got a couple of things that we forged a long time ago. And I have my survival spear. Let the uh, patrons play around with that. And then I got the rest of the stuff loaded up in the back. We got some other cool tools, some stuff to give away. Carl's bait and tackle and some mystery box things so all the lucky guys who decided to come out and uh, who could come out we'll get a treat we got some maple syrup in here too we want a front don or back might as well go in the front matter. might as well go in the front new dundee it's not too far from uh, princess auto i don't believe yeah it's right next to princess auto linden. Or, or close by anyways a loopy loop you guys don't know about linden ponds you can uh you can just show up you don't need a fishing license because it's a private pond which is why I can get away with doing all the things I do there with the spearing and all that stuff because otherwise it would be completely illegal. So you can show up, bring your kids, and then just, you know, I think you pay by the fish. I think that's the rule. Or you can get a membership if you're a fly fisher and you can do catch and release all you want. And uh, Clark's been really good to me because he's let me do all my fish experiments. So if I want to go spear a fish or hand fish a fish or a uh, bowfish fish, I can do it over at the pond. It's private, so the rules are relaxed there. Right, here we are, the boss man's over here, Clark, tending to business. Always some business going on at the hatchery. Just gotta figure out where we're going. I think we're gonna be parking up by the pond and we've got yeah, a little fire pit. We'll... How's the party going? Good. You're live. I, I try to be. It's <laughs> about the alternative, I think. Do you know Don? Uh, I don't know if we've met before. Don works with Kevin on the channel. The co-host. The co-host. He's actually co he's actually the main guy, uh, which is the secret. It's like um, the Tim the Toolman Taylor, yeah, yeah. and his and his uh, his main guy, yeah, yeah. who there runs the show. That's what it, that's the shtick. Sneaky, sneaky. I see how it goes. <laughs> Ow. There you go. Um, Where do you want us? So I'll uh, why don't we just walk over? I'll get you guys set up. Andy's supposed to be here any minute, and then he's gonna be the guy that you're. It's gonna be your main contact, just so I'm not holding you guys up. Okay. But uh, we'll follow it around, and we'll get you rocking and rolling. Sounds good. How's it going? Yeah. Have you seen it before? No. No. Come look if you want. Yeah, for sure. It is what it is. Hopefully, it gets you guys some good footage. Hopefully, it gets us some decent exposure. And first time around the block figure out the kinks yeah this is all my expectations are i'm not sure what you guys are <laughs> yeah a tree could work the fire pit can work probably better um we have some wood he brought some wood too perfect you guys will probably have better wood i do have a fire ring but i'd prefer to use something like this I know if you're keeping the track of uh, modern self-reliance, but he built this whole thing. I, I meant to take it out on an overnight, but it fell through. The complete, the whole trip fell apart because, well, we went to go and the spot we were gonna set it up to glamp in was not glamping territory. So it's all set up here. 
So we can host people here. This is this is the, the ultimate glamping because we can actually catch as many fish as we want. And we're planning on doing a little bit of a fish fry here. You gonna have a shower? I'm gonna try. I don't wanna drink the pond water. All the visitors here can come have a look, poke their head inside, see what's going on. They've got all kinds of spears and fishing rods and all this kind of gear that all the people can see in person. I think this is going to be the trick here today though. So the idea is I actually want somebody who's going to be a guest here to use this spear. It's cool to use, don't, don't get me wrong, I'd like to use it, but I want to see somebody who's a fan of the channel use it. Oh, you got one! Dude, you got one! Get him out, get him out, get him out! Oh, yes! Good job, buddy! <laughs> Good work! Nice catch, boss! You did it! Did it! Here, hold it up to the camera and show. Look at that, you got one! So I've filled up my cistern, so in case somebody wants to try the old glamper out, they can. But they're, uh, we gotta get the water from the bucket into the tank. And by doing so, I'm trying to siphon it from this tube into that tank. And it's not working well because there's air in the tube, and the tube's too long. We need a big funnel. We need a big funnel right here. This is the modification number two. Big funnel here, just dump the water in, blah, 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 into the tank. This was the one we forged. I wouldn't recommend that one if you're really hungry. And then we got a bone spear I made a couple of years ago, I guess a year ago now. Jay Valenti made this spear point modeled after a Native American spear point. And it's on about a 10 foot spear. I wouldn't recommend that one either. And then this is the one I would least recommend. This is my survival spear made out of barbed wire. It didn't really work at all. <laughs> it didn't really have the penetration I was hoping for. Um, so you got rank order, right? And I'm gonna let the people decide which they think is the best. We got maple syrup. Somebody who's lucky enough is gonna get the maple syrup. There's gonna be a, a box. I got a grab box here. All the stuff, pod skis, borax. Uh, this is for curing eggs. The Carl's bait, it's all Carl's bait. Biospawn thing, bass fishing stuff. I got some trout eggs. And uh, there's some dye in here too. I think this is like minnow dye. So you guys can, if you make it out here, you can dig through all this stuff. We got some crayfish and crawdads. All kinds of different goodies in here. The cleaning stuff for the fish. We're gonna try to spear or bow fish or fish. Maybe somebody else here wants to do it. We got a plank, a couple planks over here where you can mount a fish onto and uh, cook it over a fire pit right here. So we're all set up. See how many fish are really in this pond. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna have any problems getting the fish. And this has got a longer range, but I'm not gonna let any of, my, any of the guests fire this one, cause this one, this is for me. This is one that you can't really fool around with. It's that nice of a bow. It's I uh, I don't know if it's a fishing point. I wanted to modify this into a fish point, but I don't think the fish is actually gonna stay on if I shoot it. It might, it might be worth an experiment here. It's kind of a trial run. So you guys can see this video if you wanna come out and hang out and do this again. There's all different sections in here to maintain, you know, the COVID restrictions to make sure everything's safe. So there are a little bit of barriers, but we're going to be floating around quite a bit. And then you can come out and hang over here and uh, we'll see if it's successful and you guys liked it. And then we'll definitely do it again. Open her up. My fan going. Got the shower set up over here in case anybody falls in the pond, gets a little dirty. We'll fire the water up. It's more... People, it's proof of concept, right? I don't know how many people are actually gonna go out and do this, but you never know. The budget on this was, uh, I think we figured out it was only the cost of the trailer, essentially. All the stuff was all salvaged, the windows, um, the lights, of course, you could invest in or not invest in. There's lots of options, and the rest of the stuff is pretty much things that Kevin had already. So, I mean, all in, like everything's almost reused. The floor, obviously you can skip on the, the you know, the stove and the oven and things like that. Uh, incidentals like fans and curtains, they were all kind of just things you found around and then having access to sawmill meant that Kevin could actually just you know mill up the siding and cladding that would be a pretty big expense if you didn't have that kind of thing the real question is can you survive in something that's only 32 square feet that would be an interesting challenge to bring it out on the water to see you know obviously when it's frozen and ice fish out of it and spend the night and get that fireplace working easier way to make fire you think what's the easiest way using a lighter yeah so that's the first survival tip i'll give you is always bring a lighter because if you don't bring a lighter then you have to do all this work so we want to make sure everything's nice and square and put together here the 
So right now we're just building up the dust. That's it, that's all we're doing. So if you want to take a break, you can. We'll take a break. You see a lot of that dust is being scattered up here on the top. So one thing I figured out is that you can actually just put it down here where you want. You see the spindle is getting shorter and shorter. So I only have so many tries left in this before I have to restart and bake my whole spindle all over again. Okay, we have a fire. We don't have a flame, but we have fire. So this is cedar two. And it's uh, it won't make a flame on its own because cedar likes to do this. It likes to just smolder. So Martin and I talked about how it, it doesn't really want to light, right? But if you had some birch bark in there, you could transfer it to birch bark, which we like to do. Right, so now that's lit, I put my birch bark. And I can get that lit. So there we go. How impressive is that? I'm always amazed every time I do that because we made a fire out of stuff we can find in the woods. How cool is that? So you see, you get the feel for it. We're just going back and forth. You can't go up or down. Just on that same plane. A little faster. There we go. Oops. How's your arm? Good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're almost there. If you might have a fire. Okay, let's go fast, super fast. There we go. Keep going. <laughs> Get tired yet? A little bit? Oh. You feel the burn in your muscles? Yeah. Yeah, that's where we want to be. Okay, a little bit more. Because if we quit too early, it won't work. Keep going. Okay, let's stop. You think we got a fire? Maybe. Maybe we did it. Is it smoking? Can you see? I can't yeah. see from here. Okay. So. Here you go. Take that. Little puffs. It's all you. Just keep going. Keep going. There we go. Now all that extra air it gets, right? Because it's not stuck in the notch. Mm -hmm. So you can get, get it fired up now. Make that big pile. So if you push up at all and go up and down, it won't, it won't go very well. It has to go in the same plane, right? Parallel to the ground. And there's all sorts of other problems you'll, when you start doing it with the string coming up and down the spindle and um, finding the right materials and the conditions, like if it's humid out, this is really, really, really hard to do what we did today because it's humid and things don't like to burn when it's humid. Because does it get like toasty, toasty? Well, I, the only time I fired up was like 25 degrees outside. So yeah. like I was like, ah, oh, it's a dry heat. Yeah. Hello. Oh, very watch. cool. Oh. <laughs> watch your party. <laughs> oh. Just the, the battery. <laughs> How are you good? You good? I'm good, How's man. How's breathing? Feeling good, man. Okay, so let's finish it. We're going to count to 30, okay? Yeah. Uh, three. Might already be lit. Four. Five. I think we're through the board, too. Oh, we just went through the board. Do you feel that? Yeah, I think we're, so. We're on the bottom board, but we can still get heat because there's cedar down there, too. Yeah. Okay, does that stop here? I think we got it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so grab the spindle so it doesn't splash. So get rid of that. Grab the spindle here. Spindle. Good. Now, and keep your foot on it. So puff it. Give it some puffs up and down like that. No, keep, going. keep going, keep going, keep going. Here, if you want, we can take this out. Can I just start blowing on it now? Or? No, no, blow okay, on it. Okay, okay. Can I go this? Yeah. Okay, keep giving it some puffs just with that. Oh, I see. A little if bit you of blow on it. Too much air. Might... It can be too much air, but it'll also... Oh, there's it. enough, just yeah. enough. So you can do this. That will yeah. give it air as well. But if you blow on it, you can put it out. You could also knock the ember over. I never knew about the puffing technique. Yeah, so that's just drawing air up through the bottom. Yeah, it totally is, yeah. You can do it with your hand too, but your breath has moisture. And oh, so okay, yeah, yeah. It's not a big factor, but it's sometimes it's enough to, yeah. to wreck it on a humid day. I hear you, man. You see how you got your 
You see how it's starting to glow there? Yeah. And you want that ember to uh, travel through the whole dust bundle. Right? Yeah. And then it's all lit. Then it's in a, one big ember. So now we're pretty safe. Let's take take the spindle out here. Okay. And we're going to grab all the dust we made That's because that's really flammable. Yeah, this dust is really good. Yeah. So then we're going to tap it because we don't want it to splash. We want it to kind of separate. Yeah. And then we can add we can add all that dust on there. Deadly, man. At that point. And then you can take your knife and you can make your bundle even bigger. I love it. Because the stuff's all good. Yeah. A lot of people think that you can't stop and restart because uh -huh. you lose your heat. Yeah. But you can take as long as you want to make that. I got time. I'm safe yeah. now, pretty much. Yeah, you're pretty as much As long safe. as I got like a good bird's nest or whatever. Yeah. As long as you have um, this dust made, you can light that up. You can put that dust in your pocket, yeah. put it in the notch, yeah. and light it up. Okay. Because the start, what you're doing is making the material. Yeah. And then what you're doing is it's trapped in here. Uh huh. And you're adding heat from the spindle to the bottom here. Okay. Like feel how hot that is in there. Be careful. Oh yeah. You feel the heat it. in there? Yeah. So what you're doing is you're raising the temperature of that material to the point where it combusts. Gotcha. And you're doing that at the end. Yeah. But at the start, all you're doing is building that material, that flammable material. So exactly. if you had that already, you could just stick it in the notch and you could hit it. Phenomenal. But then you gotta spend all the time making that stuff anyway. That's right. <laughs> at which point it's time, it <laughs> makes more sense to have a lighter, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing. So that'll sit there as, as long as it takes for that to burn completely, completely out. Yeah. Right? And then if you have more, you can add it. And then uh, I don't have a good tinder bundle here, man. What I have here is like this comes off the tree like that, and then you have to work it down into a yeah. fiber, yeah. Yeah. Like which is a lot of work. And it's it's actually really dusty too. So I haven't really found a good way to do it, but you gotta do this outside. And yeah. you can see the dust, it's really bad to breathe. That, that's made out of a rock. Yeah. All wood here. So I grabbed that, that's the collar. Like there's, there might be a little, there's not much in there, but yeah. that's useful. So throw that out and then this is the kidneys down in here. Yeah. And that, that'll make your fish re taste really, really bitter. So you want to get that out. I'm and then that's angle. it. And then, uh, you want to grab my knife out of my pocket? Which one, right here? Yeah. I don't play around too much with using the, the stone tools in here because it's, right, it it's not as sharp. Yeah, exactly. But so that's the bloodline right there, kind of. Yeah, so this is the bloodline. We'll we'll get rid of that yeah. after. You could now, but whatever. This is my kind of primitive contribution. I don't see too many people doing this. We got a whole bunch of happy folks out here. We got to start some bow drill fires with the kids and the grown-ups, and we got one happy kid spearing a trout. And I think that's going to be one of the memories that lasts a lifetime, hopefully. And I gave him quite a few, quite a few survival tips. So we're planning on doing this again, maybe around mid-September. But I'll keep you guys posted on the date. And we can keep a couple of hundred people out here. There's lots of room to spread around. So we'll pick a weekend, a Saturday or Sunday, when we know most people can come out. And we'll have a big, giant gathering. Of course, we're going to follow all COVID protocols. There's lots of room to spread out here. We've got a whole field, so no worries. But uh, keep posted. We had a good time. And hope you guys saw a little bit of a window and gave you guys some incentive to make the trip out here at Linden Trout Hatcheries. Catch you in the next one.